only thing that matters is the ending. It's the most important part of the story. And this one is very good. This one is perfect. We started. <laughs> <laughs> Starting now. Starting now. Welcome, everyone, to another riveting episode of Seaman on Film. Tonight, we will be discussing another movie. Uh, it was my choice this round. Um, later on, we'll figure out things like our ratings, ask stupid questions about it, discuss some weird character choices, um, and also deciding whether or not this movie is something you would watch on deployment. Uh, we'll rate by Dixie Cups, and it's going to be a grand old time. Let's start with a few stats. Secret Window, a 2004 March release. Kind of a weird time to have a movie just come out, but whatever. It's a man it manages to be a PG-13 film, uh, runs for an hour 36 minutes, so not too long. Um, doesn't have the best ratings, no matter where you look. 6.5 on IMDb and 45% on Rotten Tomatoes to start with. And uh, yeah, so there we got uh, Quirky Johnny Depp stars in it. Maria Bello, which I'm pretty sure at least one of you has a crush on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good call. Uh, John Turturro, you, we got some good, some good players in this one. Um, right off the bat, let's just start with everybody's seen this movie before, probably, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so are any of you, like, even remotely excited to watch this film again? Yeah. Okay, good. Joe? Joe was in. He was in for it. I was curious. Yeah, I hadn't seen it maybe for over a, I mean, probably since it came out in that time frame. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> the last time I watched it was on the boat, so. <laughs> okay. Well, that might answer our later questions. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, anybody want to share their first impressions or anything before we jump into the synopsises? The John Turturro delivers a awesome performance. I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. That was one of my notes. I said John Turturro chose a weird accent. He only took this role because his kid like Stephen King <laughs> so uh he took this role as a Mississippi mud well, farmer he is mud farmer Mississippi. or sheep rapist which one was it uh, dairy, dairy farmer, farmer. dairy uh, farmer you were so close, <laughs> well, so close. Rider too, you know you gotta go Maybe to Georgia for that, that other shit this is based off the novella by Stephen King secret window secret garden it has a slightly different ending from what I can tell. I didn't actually read the novella because I don't like to read Stephen King stuff. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> they watch the movies. Well, this one's not so scary. So this is about as scary of a Stephen King movie as a Sabrina stomachs. All right. Anyways, I think I'll just go through my little story layout here. And feel free to stop me. Wave your hands or your books around in the air if you got something interesting you want to say. Oh, of course I I do. Chris, you do you, do you have something before I even get started? Yeah. Did you? Was Christine scary to you? No. Okay. Not not even remotely. Yeah, I've That's never really been scared by a Stephen King movie. I'd say since I don't read. Well. I do. <laughs> uh, Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery is creepy. I don't what know. bothered me? What bothered bothered me was the Achilles heel being sliced in that movie. That there one was that different. weird one where that guy was like losing weight really fast. I can't remember that one. Thinner. 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 Yeah, that one freaked me out. I think I was too. Uh, mostly, a lot of these were also. I was way too young to be watching a lot of this stuff. So you know, put high potential of little kid freak out. All right, cool. There. Uh, let's see. This movie starts with this is probably one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. Um, 
like in the top three, just because he's sitting in his car, it's winter, he's trying to talk himself out of it. Um, he bombards his wife and her new lover in a motel and almost starts this movie off with a bang, but instead manages to not shoot anybody. But it is a little bit um, freaky, I guess. And then um, sometime later, we zoom in on this really beautiful over the over this really beautiful lake, and we see this cute little cabin that's isolated. And we find our that Mort is now just raggedy and sleeping on this couch. He's clearly unkempt and not well, probably. Um, but we he wakes up to some knocking on the doors. Um, I should probably just read what I wrote. Otherwise, this could get weird. Um, he knock. He wake up to the knock on the door. Shooter is there, who we meet for the first time. Um, and he's all dressed, you know, dapperly, I guess, as far as he can. And he accuses Mort of plagiarism. Tries to give him his manuscript. Doesn't want it. Blah blah blah. He leaves. Mort's not shook yet. He decides he needs to go back and take a nap. <laughs> um, some hours later, we wake up and Mort finds the manuscript back in the kitchen. It turns out his wonderful, quirky old lady housekeeper is there and she's pulled it out and they have a weird conversation about pseudonyms, which is probably a lot of foretelling, foreshadowing, and that kind of thing happening. Um, she's like a fun throwaway character for a minute there. <laughs> Might have a crush on Mort. You got something, Joe? If, 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 I, if I was in this like situation that Johnny Depp awakens to, yeah, and uh, this uh, strange southerner is on the steps of my uh you know secluded northern new york homestead uh and talking about we'll handle this ourselves i think i'm probably like immediately calling the police you know like <laughs> i didn't like you know I, I you know as the movie progresses i get it but i mean you know where you are in the movie at this point you're like no dude i'm, I'm not messing around with something with some weird ass Southern dude at all talking about crazy nonsense, obviously, because it's to Johnny Depp, it's clear. He didn't plagiarize this guy's friggin' story. Yeah. They talk about dates. Like what his came out in 94 and yeah. his was. But, 97. Yeah. I think that it, it, almost immediately I, I, I do something. For sure. But this nothing. guy is, he's clearly Especially, like depressed and exhausted and, all that so that might get in the way of him defending himself in any real way yeah so i was just kind of like no i'm not i wouldn't put up with it right well that was joe's first red flag <laughs> something was up <laughs> well, yeah i mean yeah i mean <laughs> if i'm staying out in a cabin in the woods all by myself or like say me and the kids go up to big bear and rent i'm not expecting anyone to knock on my door yeah so the handgun comes with me down by the side, you know, and it's like, okay, you're going to have to leave. Like, how, how did he find him? <laughs> exactly. Like, is he listed? Is it, you know, this was his uh, vacation home or whatever. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I agree. The idea that, like, yeah, come on, folks, stay strapped. Get clapped. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody knows that, man. You're, <laughs> you're by yourself. I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe artist, it's New, maybe lover, it's not New a York. fighter. Maybe it's because you know New York. I don't really understand the 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 gun laws up there, or whatever. Especially in you know, like I'm sure it's different in upstate than it is in uh, downtown. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you know, you're up there in a secluded cabin. There's bears. Yeah, hey, at least right. something. You know, I mean, at the very least, you know, a flare gun. Hell, I don't know. He's also <laughs> yeah. a he's also a sensitive writer type, you know. These creative yeah. types. Yeah, that's what I, I just played it off as. He's depressed and he's a sensitive writer artist, you know. Like he he doesn't care enough yet. He's got very low self worth at this point. <laughs> since he 
they explained it away a little by letting you know he had dealt with the plagiarism thing previously. So maybe he's like, hey, I don't want to give it too much. Yeah. Maybe it'll just go away on its own kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. Which is what you hope for. Normally. Normally. Um, well, yeah. So anyways, this um manuscript is there and he can't help but take a quick peek at it and he finds that it is eerily similar, almost exactly word for word, <laughs> except for the ending, <laughs> which definitely ends up mattering quite a bit. Um, so we'll just jump to the next cool part where Mort finds himself a little bit creeped out in the middle of the night by a Shooter and um, finds a note um and then he finds his dead dog unfortunately um and so that's when mort finally takes this guy seriously he's like oh this guy was not messing around he goes to the old man sheriff who regales us with his knitting and his arthritis stories um, <laughs> and doesn't quite take mort seriously until mort is incredibly persistent and he says all right fine so i'll start with the description and Mort is not um, pacified by this. He does, he's not reassured by the sheriff. So he reaches out to his buddy, Ken. Ken, big city Ken is definitely some sort of like hired bodyguard protection or whatever. And he's got definitely has history with Mort. So he's like, have you done this before? And they have um, a fun back and forth. Um, but they come up with a plan, and that's what's important. Mort has a copy of the magazine at his wife's house, and he can get a copy of that, and Ken will come and check out his cabin and make sure that, like, this guy isn't um, coming back around him. Yeah, I was wondering. It, yeah. It like he had a pretty nice city house that she got to keep, right? Yeah. Her and old Timmy Hutton. Um, but every time in these movies they show like somebody having an affair, it's in a thirty-nine dollar motel room. <laughs> like I, I'm looking at your house, you could have gone to a, a Hilton or a Marriott property. Residence. They're not much more right. And it's you're in a this off the like the Raccoon Inn off the <laughs> you know State Route thirty eight or something. And well, like why is it you're like you're trying that? to hide an affair? You're not going to go lavish on an account that your partner may or may not be able to see. Too, it's a cash only hotel. Yeah, yeah. You, know what I mean? like you could you could say you spent oh thirty oh I spent a little extra money on like meeting people for lunch dates this week or something, you know, or hey, look. I had to pick up a nice you know the groceries were more expensive this week or something. Well, let's go add to the DNA to this comforter at this cheap <laughs> hotel <laughs> where anybody who uses a black light will be freaked out hey, you're gonna do shady deeds you do them in shady places you know there's truth to that <laughs> <laughs> okay andy you want to tell us up a story? As I go. <laughs> <laughs> when you go fighting crime you go in the hood you don't go in the, the rich neighborhoods <laughs> although there's some real crime going on down there i'm sure yeah just well covered <laughs> Remind you of a little film called The Other Guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what uh uh the uh the the uh, black guy, what's his name in this movie? Ken. Ken. Uh agent or what's, whatever. What's his job in real like in in the guy he's obviously getting paid like what would he say like five hundred dollars a day to yeah. do the thing with uh <clears throat> to protect uh Johnny Depp's writer character here i don't uh, know but, what his day job is but private but, investigator i think he's a private yeah. eye yeah that has no problem with getting a little rough with some people yeah I it just seemed like, like he was it. like it seemed like he was a lot more dangerous than you know so i didn't know what i didn't know if he was a, a cop or what his or just a hired goon that wore suits definitely and, not a police officer definitely a liar just some sort of private investigator and if, okay, you run so, your, if you're an entrepreneur, you can run your business as yeah. you please, I suppose. Yeah, he was, yeah. This yeah. is around the this is around the time Johnny Depp and Charles Dutton were making movies together. You know, he was a shoe shiner and nick of time there. But, uh, 
same same thing needed his help to beat people up but uh yeah it's kind of a weird thing it's like a pi like he was making good money at a nice office um probably a retired cop you know that's what they always get into get paid a little bit more money whenever it's your business and i guess he was good at it seemed like he was in a high rise office somewhere <laughs> yeah it seemed yeah, like so pretty hot. high uh high Dude, speed for even successful like a new york city PI kind of thing, but yeah. Well, Mort's a good writer, I guess. He's got plenty. No, of I just meant the PI there. was doing quite well with that. Yeah. Office. Well, I mean that he they're just showing like he's he's been a successful writer and therefore like he can afford this guy, you know. I don't know. Okay. Well, anyways. I was, I was just I, as I was watching, I was just kind of curious, I'm like. Is he a you know is he a PI what or is he like a security guard? I didn't I didn't really know. Glad we could clear that up though. Yeah, no, private investigator makes sense to me. Uh, okay. so the the plan goes along as Mort's gonna stop by his wife's house, pick up the magazine, Ken is gonna check out dude's cabin, maybe try to spook shooter, and um uh, everything will be taken care of and it'll all go away. Um, but Mort chickens out of getting the copy of the magazine like he was supposed to because he sees Ted over there and he just, he can't, he can't face that right now, apparently. Um, he heads back, he finds what, oh, this is where he's like in his car, like he finds Ken in his car and he thinks he's dead for a second and he creeps up on him. <laughs> Yeah. um so that was fun but ken's fine ken checks things out uh everything's looking good they decide that they're gonna meet up with um oh wait i think i skipped a part the house burning so anyways all is hunky-dory Mort gets spooked in the night again he thinks he sees him in the shadow but it's like a what was it a mouse or something he found he found a mouse or whatever Mouse in the shower. Um, mouse in the yeah, shower, but he, he thought he heard something or whatever. Yeah, and you see a reflection in that mirror for a second. Um, so he attacks it. Whatever. In the morning, he gets a call from his wife, and the house has been burnt down. There's so he goes and takes care of that. That's going to require like oh, admitting that somebody is after him. So maybe this is the person that committed arson. And then they're trying to like back at some, I don't know, lawyer's office or something, trying to figure out like insurance claims and asset, blah, 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 blah stuff. But Ted is rubbernecking quite a bit <laughs> and it's really getting on, like it's making the whole thing awful. So they have a weird, uh, they have a fun moment there. Um, I thought that was before he burned down the house. No, that's why they were there. They were doing that's the were sink and all that stuff. Yeah, because it comes up because it was like, well, if somebody would kind of take care of his part of this divorcing thing and he doesn't want to do it yet because then that would admit that, you know, it really has happened. Bello, Maria Bello should have never even allowed Ted to be in the same room when they're talking about assets and stuff. She, they, yeah. That's, that's on her. That's her fault. I'm on. I, I, you know, I wanted to, you know, no, Johnny Depp is 100% in the right on this. No, I'm all on board. Here. He was, Ted was being a butthead and he did get kicked <laughs> out of that room. Like he had no right to yeah. be there. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have been in there. She should have known better. Yeah. She was like, I don't know. How to divorce her just on that alone. <laughs> <laughs> You're too stupid. Hard. Let's solidify this now. Get out. Um, but yeah, I totally agree, Joe. Like that sucked. She should have not put him in that position. Um, outside the lawyer office, we get a little information about um, Ted, though, that he's from this place called Shooter's Bay. And that gets old Mort's cogs a turn in. Um, I think next we jump back to the cabin and all that. Um, we have... Sorry, I lost my spot totally. Um, anyways, 
Ken's, he tells Ken that he doesn't have the copy of the magazine anymore because it got burnt down, but Ken was already on top of it and it's getting overnight and he'll have it in the morning. Also, this Tom guy who drove by when uh, Mort was talking with Shooter and waved to him, he says that he doesn't, he, he's now denying that there was anybody else there. So the plan is for Ken and Tom and Mort to all meet up so that they can confront this thing and get to the bottom of this and get get some truth finally and while they're in town they can pick up that magazine case closed everybody's everybody's gonna get what they need and the problem will be done um unfortunately mort uh mort's alarm doesn't go off in the morning um he turn he unplugs the phone or something like that i think right yeah woke up late he wakes up late (laughs) sorry he wakes up late he tries to get out there to meet them and tom and ken are not to be found um he gets back to his cabin he sees the car was running or something and he wanders um he finds Ken and Tom in Tom's car, both of them dead. Um, And Mort can't function with this. He passes out, wakes up to Shooter above him. Um, They have some fun banter. I can't remember what he said. He looked like the guy who got hit, but who should hit someone with a shovel or something. I don't know. I should have written that down. Something along those lines. Yeah. Sleep. His leg was asleep. He couldn't run away. He couldn't run away. Anyways, um, Shooter threatens him, says fix his ending, blah, 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 and leaves Mort to deal with it. He says if he really has the copy of the magazine to meet him in an hour or some nonsense. So Mort fixes up the crime scene, gets rid of the evidence as best as Mort can, and then jets down and gets that magazine so that he can prove to shooter he picks up the magazine does a little flirting along the way when he gets home to his cabin he opens the magazine up and finds it's already been opened the pages are torn out and he starts thinking none of this is making any sense he gets into his cabin he sees the hat he puts the hat on he looks in the mirror then we're starting to figure out like more is just completely spiraled out of control here and this is where like all the shit comes together. Um, um, Sabrina yeah. at the post office. Yeah. He has the banter with the girl. She says, I saw what you did. Yeah. Was she anywhere else in that movie? Well, I... that's what he heard her say. That's what he heard her say. She oh. didn't say that. Okay. Yeah. I can hear her. Yeah. Cause she, he goes, he goes, what? And then she's like, they just continue she just moves past it like they don't she didn't actually say that all right in answer to your query though no we had not seen her before true (laughs) thanks herschel for the assist i try (laughs) um uh yeah so anyways mortson full psychotic break realizes that shooter is not a real person um physically he's just part of him and he starts talking to himself and comes to some nasty conclusions um anyways Mm. now we skip to his wife showing up because his wife is like you know what i'm gonna take care of this we're gonna get this divorce thing done get it done and out of the way i'm going over to mort's but mort's cabin is a mess um and she is getting creeped out she walks upstairs to the loft and she sees that there's just words carved in all over the walls and mort is there and he we see shooter has become shoot her because that was the ending he was supposed to have all along and yeah he there's a pursuit she is injured very badly but ted shows up and really um messes it up for all of like two seconds but then 
he gets a shovel to the head, she gets a shovel to the head, everybody's shoveled to the head, and boom, we jump forward again um, to, uh, we've got more looking all dapper. He's wearing sweaters. His hair is nicely did. He's buying napkins and taking care of himself. Um, he was buying, he was buying salt. Salt, butter, uh, and napkins uh, because. His name was Morton Rainey. That was Morton's salt. <laughs> Which means raining death in um, Latin, though. So Morton's salt was, uh, what was their uh, theme? It's a when little it rains, girl when it ammo. rains, it pours. Yeah. You know, yeah. when it rains, it pours. So Morton yeah. Rainey. Or... There were like seven different layers in this, in that. Um, there was just, he was, Stephen King was going so hard on the uh, symbology here. <laughs> um, but it, it was kind of on purpose. He was finally happy. Yeah, that's basically and, it. But nobody in town wanted to be around him. You could see everything's changed. He yeah. was happy, and nobody was happy with him around in that store, at least. And yeah. then we never. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's, he's making everybody uncomfortable. He's got his braces on. He's getting things straightened out. He hits on that girl, and she does not like it. That's <laughs> the post office girl. Um, yeah. And um, we find him back at his cabin. There's corn boiling all over the place. Mm -hmm. And the sheriff is there. And he's like, I know what you did, son. You know? And then... He's from Blue Bloods. He's tells him... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. There's Tom Selleck's dad. I was I'm like, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knits in this one. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> he... um. Yeah, the sheriff tells him he's not welcome in town anymore. He can do his shopping in the other town over or whatever. And more, it's just happy-go-lucky saying, you know what? Fine, because I got a great story and all this corn, and I feel good. Because, yeah. And then it pans out, and we see all of his um his corn grown over in his garden where we are led to believe the bodies are buried of Ted and his wife. I was just wondering. Dog. I was wondering about this yeah. the corn thing. Like he's got corn everywhere. They should have alluded somewhere earlier in the movie, like his wife said. Uh you always ate fucking corn and you know I couldn't stand corn or something like that. <laughs> but all of a sudden it's just there's the ending and he's got corn all over the fucking place. I like corn. <laughs> I like corn on the top. But I'm not going to fucking eat it this goddamn much where I got to go buy that big ass thing of salt and those napkins for my mouth because it's going to get messy. Yeah. Well, Plus, uh, everyone knows you cook it in a four foot tall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pot. That's what I was thinking. I was like, he doesn't have a big enough pot. <laughs> uh, corn laying everywhere and he's got corn outside. And I just thought, <laughs> is it tasting better because it's fucking growing from the, I would say, from well, the base of the, the problem, the roots of his issues. Good. Here's the cool <laughs> thing about corn, and it actually requires um, blood meal to grow really well. Um, it provides a lot of good flavor and iron for the corn to actually shoot up nice and tall and be all sweet and delicious. And they did allude to it earlier. That was part of Shooter's ending. He kept saying it. As he pulled another ear of corn, yeah, he did the bowl. So I forgot about that, but yeah, I was wondering that. I, I remember that in part. I was like, "What corn?" So you... change the. It's just funny that he's trying to eat corn with braces too. Are you? Are you letting me? <laughs> Joe, you're muffled. He he didn't grow all of that corn. Gr corn right? grow takes a long time to grow. A like, long it takes time to like grow. And he four had months so much to get he had so up. much of it that no, I don't know. I thought that it, I grew corn in our backyard. Only buying salt. That's an napkins. unrealistic amount of corn. Yeah, he didn't grow that. <laughs> I can, I Let me tell you something. That. For one, you get, for one you get diverticulitis. You get diverticulitis. Then you'll stop eating that corn real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what? 
Is that an affliction know. or diverticulitis? See, sometimes when Chris no. says Andy things, Cole. I just chuckle and let him think I enjoyed it. And when we oh. Yeah, yeah. I see. Patronizing. How do my jokes okay, require intelligence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patronizing. That's what it is. That's good. <laughs> I mean, when you got to move, you got to move. Sometimes Here, I'll go ahead and do it for you, Chris. Gail Lewis. There it goes. You can't do it anymore. That's it. <laughs> you mentioned you can't do it. You've shut down. Well, okay. Hold on. So... I don't know if Gail Lewis ever worked produce. And we're not. We're not. No, I'm no, not no, no. allowing this. We're getting back on track, guys. Um, is there First anything? Started. Is there is there like a favorite scene or anything that I like? I because I just glossed. I just tried to do a general synopsis here and get through the story. But was there anything you guys wanted to discuss in particular, or a moment you really enjoyed? Um, when my dog got murdered by a screwdriver, uh, my my divorcee say. Nothing would stop me from getting that magazine. I'm not going to yeah. chicken out because I see my ex-wife and her new lover. <laughs> I'm getting that stupid magazine. That magazine plot device had me pissed off the entire time. Just get the <laughs> fucking magazine. Just get, the, <laughs> just get it. Just get the magazine. And the yeah. dude stabbed your dog. Like I Look, I don't own a dog, but I do know plenty of people that do own a dog. Your dog was because... violently murdered. But the screwdriver. But, but the guy, once you get the magazine, he would have to confront his psychosis, like, and oh, so oh. he kept just putting it off. Shooter I understand, but I'm putting off. myself in the I'm putting myself in the shoes of the person yeah. that doesn't know the ending of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sure, this. but the dog and, was not his. That was her dog. They're talking on the but, phone. She's like, any, "How's my how dog?" About this? Any murdered animal on my porch that was murdered by a screwdriver, I'm getting a fucking magazine. Well, I mean, I get what you're saying, but I think in the context of the movie, it's just another part of her that had to die. So he's like, you know, fuck it, I don't care. Yeah. Not a whole. Lot. Okay. I mean, he just immediately buried him. You know. Uh, yeah, he was not super attached to that dog. No. Nah. Yeah, it was. Was he buried with the bodies to grow the corn? I don't think so. He buried it away from the It looked like it was in a different spot. Yeah. His name's uh, Chico. Yeah. Chico. Chico. That's where the, that's where the Mexican corn grew. Oh, uh, and the my man. Favorite. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, uh, I think my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> Chris is so funny. <laughs> you see? That's how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think my favorite part of the movie was when uh, you first see Johnny Depp asleep on the couch in his cabin. Yeah, and you realize that, like, damn, what a sweet fucking life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a couch sleeping son of a gun. Like, I mean, the dude is barely dressed. He's <laughs> he's just like I don't know. He's asleep on a, a, a on a couch in the middle of the wilderness, and it's a it's a good piece of property he's just kind of like you know hanging out in his robe and his you know i, I don't know I the, the, it wasn't my favorite part of the movie by the way but it was definitely a scene where i was like dude what am i doing <laughs> writer's block I'm over or rainy is my spirit animal <laughs> i'm doing all this i'm working doing all this nonsense i'm just writing stories just hold it back uh, that's I, my I had thought that i was like i don't care how depressed i am i I can't nap that much. And once I get up and get threatened by John Shooter, I can't go right back to napping. <laughs> he was like, where was I? Oh. It's not really sleeping. It's like a fight club uh, type situation where, you know, he just kind of blacks out. And yeah, well, that's where we come to find out. out is he's he's not actually that tired. It's just he becomes Shooter when he's napping. Right. Which is why everybody's like, well, I think he sees his wife. He, she says, oh, you look like shit. And you're like, oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, everybody's not as concerned as they should be, for sure. But yeah, it seems like the whole town knows that something weird happened, even if they can't prove it. And he's kind of outcasted. But it doesn't bother him because he has his perfect ending. I was wondering why they couldn't prove it. That's that's where my yeah, this, mind. This whole movie was pretty lazy. 
Um, cause I, I was like saying like, if I'm the sheriff, he walked all the way through and he saw the piles of corn. I'd be like, you know what? Something's weird about your fucking corn. Yeah. <laughs> also, there's two, two to four people that are missing. The first thing I'm going to check is this fucking ravine. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, we need to drag the lake. We got to get the feds involved. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lake nearby. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that, that the sheriff there was too, you know, enthralled with his job. I mean, you know. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't appear to be uh, Kojak over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so not exactly Columbo. <laughs> no, no. He, he's he's over here doing needlepoint. Worried about his arthritis. Yeah. Um, hey, yeah. Rule number one: If you're going to murder people, do it in a town, a small town, with a lazy sheriff. Do it is, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can get away with a lot doing that. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, I'm supposed to be driving this thing. Um, Something. Like- <laughs> so um speaking of corn and the fact that that's probably not the greatest vegetable according to chris to grow in your garden let's just jump right into emi um chris what is the thing you would grow in your garden of death oh i put grapes so i can enjoy a fine wine Made from. Ooh, you'd what make would you make? What did you your call it? Meat. What did you call that? It needed. What was it? Blood meal. Yeah. I would do grapes and make some wine out of their dead bodies. Thank you. Be like, thanks for the fertilizer, dipshits. Yeah. What would you name your wine? Well, I'd name my wine. Oh. Oh, that's a good one. Whatever the motel was that they were fucking uh, at. <laughs> I like it. There you go. That is vengeance. Right was there. that a genuine laugh? Sabrina, uh, yeah 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 that was a real one eval all right <laughs> i'm really good at it though aren't i uh <laughs> let's see uh joe what are you planting in your murder garden i only pick one thing you can pick multiple things i just you think can have oh, a garden, I was, actually oh i thought it was i thought it was five things oh no, no, no it's just like in weapon? general, like what are you? Well, <laughs> or only planted the one thing and had a plethora oh. of it. Well, I actually went with like the idea of my garden also being a murder garden, with okay, like cool. uh, stabbing with people with zucchini plants. With, <laughs> plants that kill. It's actually kind of fun. With yeah, with plants that are beautiful but also deadly. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Nightshade. Good, 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 good. Oleander, Foxglove. Yeah, that's pretty bad. This one's named after the street Adam grew up on. Hemlock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just threw in castor beans at the end, you know? So it's the bison. <laughs> <laughs> no Venus flytrap. All right. Oh, there yeah. you go. Two, two on the nose. And plus, well, I don't know. In, I don't know any place in the uh, continental United States that would allow you to grow uh, Venus flytraps outside in your garden. I think, I think that's probably something more in like a, a more of a tropical climate. <clears throat> maybe, maybe, maybe Florida. I don't know. But Florida, yeah, in upstate New York, I think the rest of those things would be just fine. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. Good call. I like that. That was thematic. Uh. Andy, what you got? What's in your garden? Going uh, zucchini. Zucchini? Like, uh, zucchini bread when I'm not uh, murdering. And then uh, throws people off my trail with a lovely slice of uh, delicious zucchini bread. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's nice. You can feed. You can nourish the neighborhood. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> There's so many ways to cook zucchini. Uh, Herschel, what you got? So it's a little unfair. I'm sorry, because I, too, picked zucchini, but for a different reason. Oh. <laughs> um, and you're the cook here, so you can tell me whether I'm full of shit or not. Zucchini is one of the things that uh, that you can add. Uh, you can add it, and it tends to take on the flavor of whatever it's added to. So I would hope that uh, while I'm making my zucchini, I'm also tasting some of that fertilizer, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I think you do. That's you know pretty gruesome. Uh, I think the vegetable itself takes on flavor when you use it to cook. Her it's not necessarily with, uh, the growth, but I like but don't like where your head's at. That's great. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, that's, 
priests in the room. That was the right kind of creepy. Yeah. She's right over there. She agrees with that? Uh, I don't think she's paying attention. <laughs> uh, Adam, where are you growing? I went with extraterrestrial Venus flytrap, so I don't have to bury bodies anymore. I got <laughs> the flytrap dispose of them for me. Oh, okay. Yes. Very like uh... Audrey 2? Good exactly. Like Audrey yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this must be a reference to something, but... <laughs> you, may, you may see more. Oh, yay. Um, I was going to stick with the three sisters, which is a combination of corn, beans, and squash, because they grow really well together. Like, you grow your corn, and then you plant your beans, and your beans grow up the corn stalks, and then... Um, Squash stays low to the ground, and uh, corn has notoriously deep roots, and so I, I think that was it was actually a pretty smart choice on Mort's part. This is such a crisp move because she only picked this movie so she could tell us about how smart she is at gardening. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Did not. Did not, actually. It's such a crisp move. I, uh, Did not. I like that. I like to set myself up for success. I picked this movie because we were in between two different, like, in between horrors and horrors and horrors, and I needed something different. Uh, well, I, so you say it has deep roots. Do you think he killed Chico? You know, so if somebody did come with, what is it called, like the ultrasound machines to look for bones, and they find it's like, that they dig, and they oh, we got bones, and they find out, oh, it's a dog. So they don't go two feet deeper to where the human bodies were. They're like, all right, it's just an animal. Let's move on. A bit smart, or bit if smart. you plant. What is the uh, thing on the internet? The uh, you plant uh, endangered flowers and stuff, so it's illegal to dig them up. <laughs> well, yeah, he's yeah. right on the lakeside. Maybe he's hoping that, like you know, it erodes eventually. Hmm. Fair. Me. That's it's fair. Three on top of, and hopefully the roots just eventually like encapsulate the the body so much that nobody messes around in there you yeah. probably grow like and I don't then know, when you till it, pine. you t if you till it properly and you add new compost and soil the next year then it'll all get mixed up and you won't be able to tell what's what we're still finding cavemen <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i mean yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to think of something that'll like grow like i don't know around the i mean if i if i was going to kill somebody i guess i would probably would plant a tree like right on top of them or something or go buy one of those already like pre-grown ones that are like you know yeah. five years old already and just load that <laughs> thing up well and hopefully he was smart enough to them. chop it up and to have that much corn it would be a sizable lot so it would be bone here and then four feet away there'd be another bone you know like just depending on if you spread it out appropriately you probably should burn the body first and then use the bones like under the ground to like I don't know. I mean I, I don't know. That's what I would do. Yeah. Burn burn. I like how much you're thinking about mushrooms. Decompose yeah, them. Do can, do mushrooms can they decompose bone though? I don't know. I, don't know. I did time. hear about feeding like you could feed anything to pigs and pigs will eat anything. Yeah. I saw that movie Maybe too. That's I, what he I thought, still uh, believe it. That's what John <laughs> Shooter would have done. He's a dairy farmer, though, not a pig. Hey, he knows about pigs if he's from Mississippi. <laughs> right? Oh, Herschel's neck of the woods. Neck of the nape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got pigs. What about it? Oink, oink. Uh, Something along those lines, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, what was our, uh, our other EMI was um, five top five murder weapons. Um, they could be because you thought they were really silly, because they're really cool, because they're iconic, whatever. Murder weapons for movies. Here we go. Um, I'm gonna go in the same order I went before. So we'll start with Chris. It's Pin, Pin Davenport. <laughs> oh, I can't see the microphones in the way of your little, oh, um, there you are. I was, uh, I was thinking about the laser gun. You know, the Navy's supposed to have had a, like a laser gun for how long, guys? Since we real gun, since we were in the Navy. Yeah, supposed to have this nice laser gun. So I'd always want one close. of those. Well, no, we uh, do have a laser. Before. It's on the Ponce. They have it. Oh, I would it's like there. that. You know, because I've always 
why the stormtroopers couldn't shoot them straight, I don't know, but maybe we've gotten it right. Um, a crossbow with, you know, automatic loader, so you can have like 20 arrows just going across, and every time you shoot one, it automatically loads the next one. I know they have bow and arrows that do that. Mm -hmm. So something like that. Uh, the bladed boomerang. That's what I want. <laughs> Made famous in the Road Warrior. That the the weird kid with the special glove caught all the time. Yeah. Um, I also want a... Uh, I, I wrote hook hand, but it's a uh, it's basically a <laughs> a limb. If you're missing a leg or an arm, you can have interchangeable parts, so different weapons that you can click on. Yeah, you know, like Enter the yeah. Dragon. Enter the Dragon, like you know, Mister Hand. Uh, yeah, the Planet Terror or Inner Space. Remember, there's like some I don't remember what movie it was, but there's a chick with a machine gun leg thing. Yeah, that's Planet, Planet Terror. Terror. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um. You know, in inner space, you know, old Vernon Wells, when he's walking out of the mall after shooting that guy with his finger, with his mechanical hand, he walks past that kid's balloon and pops it. So that was always funny to me. I think my number one is a garrot. Uh, Damn you. I don't know. If, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed. Are you allowed to carry piano wire around, Herschel? Has that been? Yeah. Just it's... that. That Especially if that's your profession. I mean, yeah, you can twist that garrote, the two handles after you have the piano wire and the neck, you know, and you can just feel the personalization of the murder. <laughs> I'm sad. You know, <laughs> kind of like this is probably, you know, you're like, oh, after I fucking kill this one right here, I'm going to go plant my grapes on top of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've always liked the garrote. Um, I had written guillotine. That's not a weapon, though, it's a, a device more. So. But the garage is punished, yeah, like, not to murder. So right. Oh, neither, neither is a screwdriver, but it's in theme with the top five. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like a, <laughs> you know, it's pretty open. <laughs> uh, that brings us back to Joe. All right. All right. I uh. <clears throat> All right, murder weapons in movies that I enjoy. Uh, how about the axe from uh, Last Action Hero? <laughs> hey, love for that one? Yeah, I like that one. All right, all right. Um, the knife uh, from the bad guy in Commando. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I did not mean Commando. I meant Cobra. I apologize. Okay. Night I slasher. Were, I thought you were going. Cobra. That that fucking thing was crazy. Um, uh, I also have a uh, murder. Just pigs in general. <laughs> we we saw that movie, you know. And, <laughs> and, and, yeah, I guess so. it works. Whatever. Um, I also really enjoy the murder weapon, Mickey Rourke's mitts in yeah. Sin City, right? <laughs> Oh, and uh, my favorite murder weapon would probably be a shot of slow mo and then thrown off of a building. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just red. Yeah. The best. Yeah. Hans Gruber slow mo. <laughs> I take I take Hans Gruber slow mo too. That'd be a good. One. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joe. Andy, you're up. What are your top five weapons? I went for the uh, the long game and the uh, you know perfect crimes here, uh, starting with sugar, developing diabetes over time. Oh, okay. And, uh, neuropathy. <laughs> I got and, uh, you know. Oh yeah. god. High fructose I corn syrup. syrup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the top of the nations. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, smoking. <laughs> seven minutes off your life eventually the respiratory diseases catch up with you it's gonna get you just encouraging your partner to smoke okay yeah yeah uh um, how about some popcorn lung from vapes <laughs> since we're on a corn theme yeah, yeah man. um <laughs> dihydrogen monoxide <laughs> just drown and like that'll take you out you know uh all of these, you know, of course, leave no marks. They're largely self-inflicted over time. Um, and sometimes stress. you can lead, lead, lead a fulfilling life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> S 
stress building up over time, you know, <laughs> you can create other ailments and, uh, you know, eventually culminating it's to like cardiac office arrest. episode where Michael Scott yeah. thinks he's like, he, it's dangerous working in an office setting. Yeah. And then I went, uh, lastly with marriage because <laughs> oh, men God. die like seven years earlier than women. So perfect murder. Well, and he- it suits this film. <laughs> wow. So Andy, you had no ethylene glycol in there whatsoever. No. no. The slow killer. Um, I want to bring another one up that uh it was a San Diego murder case. Um, what's it called? The blue shit. They it's a blue Antifreeze? like paint. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's only in specialized flowers that you can find it. Oh. It's like a blue poison, and that's what they found out this dude was trying to kill his wife with out here, but they saved her. Mm. She Never. kept going, and she was like losing all of her hair, couldn't fucking walk, things like that. Yeah. They found out he uh, he was collecting rare flowers, and you could get that shit. It was like From blue Prussia. Prussia. It's like blue Prussia or something, or yeah, the Oleander and I show no idea. <laughs> hmm. So that's Andy slow kills. Oh, in all caps yeah. too, but you know, perfect crimes. You get away with all those. Hmm. Yeah. There's no marks tie you in. Yeah, she smokes That's two packs a day and watch. drinks a two-liter Pepsi. You know, <laughs> is it pleasing to watch like it kill them over time, or is it just become like okay, do it already? Because then you can't live your own life if you're trying if to. You can. You're, you're going to yeah. get away with it. None of these are leaving any distinguishing marks to tie you back to this crime. Yeah. Um, yeah. No fingerprints from drowning. There's, you know, that's probably the quickest one. You well, know. your your patience is impressive. <laughs> all right Herschel. yep it's your turn what are your weapons so you know i mean nothing um nothing worthy of following in those footsteps <laughs> sorry. uh but you know so any gun you know guns that make it easier to kill people since the match lock um i'll go with a butcher knife that I've never actually seen anybody actually have in one of their kitchens, like yeah. you know, fifteen inch jobs. The cleavers, uh, but right. yeah, I, but there it's like in every movie. So sure, obviously there. Maybe I'm just not rich enough. I don't know. Our <laughs> knife from Walmart didn't have it. Um, the machete, which is actually really dull. So if you're gonna <laughs> do it, I mean, it's you, there's some dedication there. Messy. Um, I do like the shovel. You know, the shovel is a good one. You got reach. You got an edge. Um, you can dispose of the body. I, yeah. exactly. I, I've told Patrice time and time again, if I ever go on Naked and Afraid, I'm taking a shovel. Because, I mean, it's it's multifaceted. It's multifunction. A leather man of killing tools. Exactly. Um, and I was going to go with a garrote. But that <laughs> was <laughs> stolen. That's so that specific. <laughs> um, so... I'm going to go with with any airlock in any spaceship that you can get thrown out of. And if you want to keep it into the real world, it would be any plane that you can be thrown out of without a parachute. Uh, so, yeah, there there you go. That's five. That's good. Let, uh, let, let the record show that both of us picked Garot for number Garot. one. Yeah. No, I did. It, it, mine was going to be the pull it out of your watch kind, not the two handle uh, deal. You're talking about the Lucky Charms and Austin Powers? Yes. Yeah, like <laughs> so. Oh, the Shark Pool and Austin Powers. Though. That's a good one. All right. Well, thank you for sharing, Herschel. Uh, now we come over to, uh, I guess, your chip. Sure. Hmm. My chip or you, Evelyn? It don't matter. Okay. Um, My top five murder weapons, semen on film edition. Uh, number five is uh, ship line as seen in Ghost Ship. Mm. Yeah. Uh, number four is the fish hook from I Know What You Did Last Summer. Okay. Um, number three is a harpoon gun as seen in Friday the 13th, part three. Wow. <laughs> uh, number, what's that? In Deadpool? Dirty Harry, Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He does gun there. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. in there too, but it's it's cool, man. Um, 
Number two is the galley microwave as seen in Under Siege. Yeah. And the yeah. <laughs> and the number one uh weapon killer is uh the Tomahawk cruise missile as seen in Top Gun 2. Mm. Thank you. I like that you uh you all had really good fun takes on this. <laughs> very not very nautical. Uh, yeah. Glad yes. somebody caught it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not yeah, we, want you let's make sure everybody knows. Yeah. Once you said the galley mic. Nautical again. theme. You Once you use the word galley, that's all nautical. <laughs> Clever takes. Uh, you guys are always putting on your own flavors to these things. Um, I went with the weirdest ones. Like I, I thought of like weird kills and silly kills mostly with this. Um, so um the the steamroller from who framed roger rabbit who's steamrolling those uh tunes right out of toontown awesome powers, from awesome powers though yeah 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 well that, that's my where i first knew it um <laughs> oh i saw this movie with the with the kill there was a horror movie with the snowman that comes to life jack keaton and he kills with a with um a carrot like he takes his nose and stabs with it and i thought that was really weird um in season <laughs> yeah. also in season yeah <laughs> um one two three four five did i write five six okay um there was i don't know why i watched it but there was a james bond film with this guy named odd job and he has a bladed bowler cap that he uses yeah. as a weapon <laughs> i don't remember this movie at all i just remember watching this guy and going <laughs> How is this a thing? That guy doesn't Old. look like he's fighting. What is happening? <laughs> Goldfinger. Uh, that's that one. Cute. That's Goldfinger? That's Goldfinger, yeah. Yeah, I just Googled movie with guy with bowler cap as a weapon. <laughs> like, because <laughs> I didn't know did, what it was. Well, did Austin Powers pop up? Uh, yeah, no. That was a shoe. Was yeah. A shoe. Uh, random <laughs> task. Used random to task. Was a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> Random task. Because it was odd job, you know, in Goldfinger. Odd yeah. job through the job. bowler hat. So random yeah. task at a throw the shoe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I think I'm on four here. Um, the a stampede of antelope, as in the Lion King. Mm. <laughs> Second Lion King reference in as many days. <laughs> I just like working in a kids movie every once in a while. And then um, murder weapon. the attempted murder weapon of the uh, records from Shaun of the Dead while they were trying to, I guess I like throwing things. Uh, <laughs> um, they were trying to kill the zombies uh, the, the, that were in their yard with the records. Thought that was ridiculous. Anyways, those are my murder weapons. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Let's see. I guess we have to do ratings or um, what do we call it? Is this movie deployable? Let's start with deployment. Is this pl deployment worthy film? Um, Penn Davenport, start us off. Is this movie deployable? I don't think so because um, of the it's like a quiet tone. Mm -hmm. and it, it kind of you know it's like it's something you have to sit there and watch to because if you get up and miss a scene you're probably not going to real understand the end yeah but it's uh not too many times we just sit there but it's like i said very slow very uh quiet and usually you have to grab people's attention on deployment when they're walking past a tv so i, I don't think so but you oh. know people yeah. who like Stephen king will uh sit down and watch the movie Cool. Uh, Joe, is this movie deployment worthy? Oddly enough, I saw this on the ship, and I think it was the only <laughs> time I've ever seen this. It was probably with Andy. Probably. <laughs> and uh, uh, um, I don't think it. I don't think it. I don't think it brings a lot to the uh, deployment table. I think if you watch this on deployment, it means because you have a weird friend that has a bunch of dvds <laughs> and uh you, you just borrowed it because you wanted to you know see a johnny depp movie so i'm gonna go with uh not deployable and yeah. once you see it once it's over with 
Yeah. You know, the shock and awe is gone. So not deployable. Sounds Bring good. Bring on Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. You can go in and out of no all day. <laughs> I like that too. Uh okay, Andy, what do you think? Deployable? I think it is deployable. Uh because I watched it on a <laughs> deployment. I remembered almost nothing about it. Yeah. Um and it turns out I remembered everything about it because there's nothing to remember. Um, it's a movie you watch when you have a limited number of options. And, uh, you know, if you, you step away, you're not missing anything. Movie. It's a slow burn. Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, when you're a captive audience with not a lot, it, I wouldn't say it's worth a watch, but I mean, you could watch it. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Herschel, what do you think? Deployable? Not deployable? So I'm going to go with no because of similar to what Penn or Penis or whatever his name is uh, brought up. It's quiet. There's a lot of interior monologue. And I mean, you've been underway on a ship. There's all sorts of background noise. You can't hear what's going on. Sure. Um, so for a first watch, I, I'm going to go no, but I am going to break a little bit um, and say that it is good to watch again. And here's why, because you already know the big reveal. So you can go back and pick up on little things that, that pointed you in that direction the whole time. You just didn't necessarily pick up on. Um, yeah. But uh, but I would say no on the deployment piece, just because you wouldn't be, you'd, you'd miss all of it, you know? Yeah, I agree. Adam? It is not a deployment movie. I just think it ain't it. It's, I don't think it's a good movie, period. <laughs> <laughs> and so for that reason alone, I wouldn't want to watch it on deployment. Okay. Uh, and not going to blow any minds here. I don't think it's a deployable movie either. I do think it's rewatchable, like at least one time for what Herschel was saying. Like I liked going back and going, oh, that was a hint. Oh, that was a hint. Oh, that was a hint. And like breaking down all of like, cause there's a lot of symbolism and metaphors and wordplay and imagery things that are happening in this movie that is fun to analyze, but it's not necessarily fun to watch <laughs> i i will say though it even only in 90 minutes you do slowly see him losing his mind yeah you know what i mean and so they they managed to do that 90 minutes i mean you watch the shining and he goes from being halfway normal to psychotic in five seconds you know so i think at least in 90 minutes they were able to do that like you, you get a genuine look of this guy's going out of his friggin' gourd so. that was uh what I was saying it was uh I'd seen it before and I couldn't really remember what had been happening through the movie. So then as I saw a couple of things, I just went, Oh, oh, okay. Was John Shooter real? Yeah. But I, I said there was, you know, because I've seen a couple of movies where they oh yeah, I saw him. He was by himself. You know, I've seen a couple of movies use that. Sure. Oh, you know, but I was thinking, I said, Oh, okay, this is like a okay. It started coming back to me and clicking. So I was like, okay, I did get to see it again. I did realize it, which, you know, I did like the movie. So, yeah. like I said, it's 90 minutes and then, you know, didn't feel 90 minutes. Mm -mm. Maybe I like watching people lose their mind over time. I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, Andy's been dosing them with shit. <laughs> get down on my level, you know? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys. So what? That was just one, one deployable? I figured yep. that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, well, stop and start at the top again. Um, Chris, if you have anything else you want to say, um, and if you want to give us your Dixie Cup rating, please and thank you. All right. Um, yeah, I like this. Uh, I like this pick. I, I can see you're trying to break up the, uh, the horror genre because that's my pick as well. Yeah. Coming up. So, uh, um, when you picked it, I was like, I said, I don't remember that being a horror movie. I don't know how it's PG thirteen with the uh, screwdriver and the hatchet murder. 
I thought those were off camera. Uh, most of it's just off camera or angled yeah. just so. Too quick. You know? That shot was too quick. Yeah. Um, they don't really swear a lot either. So. Not that you can hear it, no. So I enjoyed watching <laughs> it again. Like I showed you guys, I had the DVD. So I had bought it at some point. And uh, this was probably back at a time when I liked Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I was watching a few of his movies uh, when he started wearing the. I think when he went from maybe five bracelets to fifteen is where I said, "Okay, all right, I, I'm not doing this anymore." <laughs> um, this okay. whole bohemian bullshit. Uh, but I like this movie, and it is something like you have to pay attention and listen to the inner dialogue, and you start figuring it out. Like, okay, I remember it, so I, I want to give it six Dixie cups. Cool, six it is. Thank you, Penn Davenport. Joe, what you got for us? This is just not a very good movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't. Really, I don't really like it that much. Um, I like John Tatura quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I thought. I thought. I. I. I, I thought he was pretty cool. Um, but um, I was going to really shit all over it, but then Herschel made a really good point that if you watch it again, you get to see the little things that you may have missed and listening to some of the conversation. There is some stuff that I missed. There's also some stuff that I picked up on, like the cigarettes and you know, a, a few other things in there. Um, so um, in order not to like, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give it. A, I'm going to give it a five. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a five. I mean, it's not it's not great. I'm not really gonna I'm not gonna tell a bunch of people about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. What to tell. I don't. I mean, I, you know, I watched it. I I, <clears throat> I enjoyed myself for ninety minutes. I kind of saw what was you know Tyler Durdening the entire time, and uh, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm neither here nor there on the on the damn thing, to be honest with you. But I was going to really give it a lower score into the fours. But, you know, there are some good points made about why this could actually be better than what I think it is. <laughs> yeah. Five. Yeah, like, yeah, that's marriage for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, science and end of this. Zing. So far, there's only been two My jobs God. of marriage. <laughs> uh, Andy... What's your rating? Yeah. What are your thoughts? Final thoughts? Uh, yeah, final thoughts. Like I said earlier, John Turturro, pretty great in this. Um, the March release kind of tells you everything you need to know, um, which means <laughs> it's really a throwaway movie. Um, yeah. It's after the Oscar season movies have all come out that are all artsy and supposedly good, generally. Um, it's not summer blockbuster material. It's a throwaway, um, and it's a five. It's not bad. It's not really good. You can watch it. It's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> well stated, sir. <laughs> All right, we move on to Herschel. What are your final thoughts on your how many Dixie Cups, sir? So um, I'm going to break a little bit. Again, I'm going to go 6.5. I, I do like it. Uh, I think it's a good movie. I think it shows you that Johnny Depp can be a good actor. It's not all just, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. Because so much of the movie is just him acting with himself and off himself. Um, Totoro, also good. But uh, I do think it's a decent flick. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I already gave my, uh, you can watch it more than once and here's why. Or don't, you know, do whatever you want to do. But uh, 6.5 for me. All right. Solid. Uh, Adam? I'm going to... Give it a three, aren't you? I didn't like this movie. Yeah. It's not a bad movie. I thought it was lazy. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, maybe everything was intuitive. I don't remember shit about this movie. But, like, you know, it started off with the writer. So he has imagination and the first person he meets is a sheep farmer from Mississippi or some shit. So I was like, oh, this guy's not real. From that very first scene, I was like, oh, this guy 
doesn't exist. So I spent the whole movie just waiting for the reveal. Um, I didn't like Totoro's character either. I like the dialogue between them them two whenever they were in the scene together, but um, I didn't. I guess I was the only one that wasn't a big fan of Totoro's character. Um, like I said, it, I didn't like it, but it was a fine movie. <laughs> uh, I give it a five point five Dixie Cups. Okay, that was better than I anticipated. Uh <laughs> I mean, it's watchable. It's suspenseful. It's a you know, it's a reveal ending type movie. So like, I get it. I just think there's better versions of this. Do you do you yeah. think it could have been better since it was like mostly just Johnny Depp? Do you think it'd been better if he would have had a volleyball? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, my pick. It's kind of what everybody else has already said. I I enjoyed this movie. I was a I think I was like a teenager watching this and I remember thinking, oh, this was fun, you know? Um, and I liked it then and I hadn't watched it since, you know, I was a teen. So to see it now um, and to get to rewatch it so that I could put the puzzles together and see all the layering, um, I can appreciate like, this movie has decent actors. It has decent director. It's got, pretty cool cinematography things going on um, and lots of stuff to dissect, but it does somehow fall a little bit flat in the story. And it's kind of unexplainable <laughs> um, to me, but I think it's watchable. Um, I think it's enjoyable. And I'm going to stick with the, with my 6.5, which is what I was going to go with. Um, it's not the greatest movie, but it is something that I can definitely point to. And if somebody wants a, I don't know, something that's suspenseful, then it's there. It's funny. I was getting pissed off a lot now that I'm thinking about it. Like I got pissed off when I'm, when we were introduced to shooter, I was pissed off that he couldn't just grab the fucking magazine. I was pissed off when his his wife saw shooter written everywhere. I'm like, and I was like, oh god damn it, shoot her! <laughs> like yeah. everything is just making me angry. <laughs> um, the weird thing is that I wrote just what like three notes here. Yeah, yeah. under my top five, bladed boomerang. Mine one, yeah, bladed boomerang. Under that, John Turturro's accent. Odd choice. John <laughs> Shooter Arrow shoot her. Yeah. Yeah. Then I put, then I put motel. Oh. <laughs> yeah. At least where you have to go inside a building. Oh, yeah, like crazy. this movie is an example of like even if like this could have this was almost a really a good movie. Like really good movie. With all of those other things. Like you got good actors, you got good cinematography, you got good all that other stuff. But if the story is not written perfectly or just better then it falls apart but i really like the john turturro now that you i remember and you like john turturro and uh johnny depp whenever they're in scene together yeah their scenes together is great going back and forth is fun either <laughs> character separately drives me nuts but i loved watching more interact with absolutely everyone so i guess i just like he's a good actor unfortunately um okay cool so that wraps it up um we're pretty much in line with like what the rest of the world thinks as far as ratings go on this which is not always the case for us um let's see we have to do movie announcements and we don't have a wheel to spin right <clears throat> end of season guys so uh who's got the pick i have the pick <gasps> All right. Well, thanks for watching Secret Window. It's all for you, Penn Davenport. Thank you, Eva Ryder. Um, <laughs> my category was. You so horror. happy that somebody said it out loud? <laughs> so <laughs> it was a horror thriller. Now we've had too many horror movies lately. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I went the thriller route with uh -oh. this one for the nineties. 
Wait, the nineties. Oh, there's and a ton I of wanna, great ones. I want to say I haven't watched this movie since around the time it came out, so even longer than Secret Window. And this one has some good actors. They had their time, you know, little pockets of time where they were great. Uh, so for my 1990s thriller, Joe, do you like boxing? Are you telling me that you're going to be picking Digstown? It's Snake Eyes. Um, I don't know no, my pick is going to be the thriller classic Judgment Night. Ah. Starring Emilio Estevez and Cuba Gooding Jr. Ah. So it is listed under the thriller suspense <laughs> category. Is that night with an N or night with a K N? Uh, it's, it's, it's with the N. N. Um, so... It's the N word, night. <laughs> Judgment night. Okay, cool. And, and since this movie stars Deacon Frost, we're going to have an easy top five list. It's going to be your top five movie villains since Adam thinks Deacon Frost is two. Uh, and then another, I'm going to have some extra EMI for you guys. It's a weird one. And Andy might know this, but this was one of the more unique movie soundtracks that ever came out. So you're going to have to listen to the soundtrack and tell me what was your favorite song from the soundtrack. Oh, okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Andy, have sure you listened to this uh, soundtrack? I don't And what's think unique so. about it? I can't say that I have because I've definitely never seen the movie. <laughs> He's like, oh, that would be really weird um, if you were listening to the soundtrack. I, I think it. you're all going to like the soundtrack. Uh, what they did was they mixed a rock band with a rap group on every song. So they all wrote their own songs for the movie. Okay. And it was more the unique ones of the nineties. Whenever like they started putting like real music from real artists, not these guys from the eighties who played guitar on pornos and maybe wrote a song <laughs> for an eighties movie. Like I'm imagining um, all those Lincoln park and Jay Z mashups. Yeah. Or is it cooler or weirder than that? Yeah, Danny so Elfman did a lot of, Great soundtracks, though, for, you know. So that was top five movie movies. villains, favorite soundtrack. We can do a cruise book quote, since the villain in this movie is pretty quotable. I was like, I have a feeling if you're picking this movie, it's quotable. I, 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 Sabrina, honestly, not, I there's don't There's been a lot remember. of disrespect for cruise book quotes, by the way. What do you mean? Thank I you, Joe. I, I agree 100% on that. I like the cruise book quote. Oh, you're going to have to elaborate on the, what do you mean disrespect? Yeah. Nobody yeah. has been using it as a category, as an EMI. I used um, it. it was just the last, it was just mine and what, one? No, Andy doesn't like to use them either. I used it. My movie just wasn't quotable. Uh, like, uh, Secret Window? There's, there's more in there than you think. It's just, you know, it's... <sighs> You know, come yeah, on. I don't remember any of the I didn't expect you guys to absolutely movie. love Secret Window enough to want to quote it anyways, so. Come on. Who doesn't like You Stole My Story? Come on, man. You Stole My Story. <laughs> Except for that was everybody's cruise book quote for this movie. <laughs> There's that one with the, maybe I'll even forget her one day. That's a good one. Yeah, but. Her yeah. death will be a mystery to even me. That's a good one. Yeah. Herschel, I think you like this more than you... I, I do like it. I do you want to like bump it up to I feel seven? like you're, oh. you're closer to a seven on this. Because no, you're, you're stay... selling it better than I am. <laughs> I'm going to stay where I'm at. You know? I appreciate um, it. But it, I... I'm just saying, there's there's more good to it than uh, some people in this here uh, group. Are well, really I picked two. It. That's all I'm saying. I picked two EMIs, so I didn't feel like... That's all I'm saying. I should go to three. <laughs> Come on. I mean, he, you know, <laughs> there's a talking heads quote in there. Come on. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Same as it ever was. Yeah. Nope. Not that but yeah. So uh, does that wrap night. it up? We got anything to discuss? Like how we're going to wow. proceed with this next uh, nope. season? We could wrap it up. Oh, What's our, we're wrapping um, it up, guys. Do we have a finale movie we're doing next? It's probably like going to be after Chris. Okay. It's probably going to be Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I, I don't remember discussing this. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. I'm, well, we don't know what we're doing next, but it's going to start after Chris's movie. Uh, and thanks for tuning in and listen to us bicker with each other and enjoy each other's company. Have a wonderful night or day whenever you're watching this. Doodaloo! Peace nice. out, homies. Yeah.